Computer Chronicles is brought to you by the Oracle Small Business Suite, one completely integrated application that helps make it easier to run your business, including accounting, sales and service, your web presence, and more. Additional funding is provided by PC to PC, the online migration service from PC First, moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. We are in Singapore this week, one of the Asia dragons in the high-tech industry. But Singapore is a little different. It's trying to distinguish itself from the other high-tech centers here in Asia by becoming more than just a place where they manufacture and assemble computer components and products. It is trying to become a kind of living, working laboratory for advanced technology. And in many ways, Singapore is becoming a model for the high-tech society of the future. For Singapore's children, the high-tech society starts in school. This is the Canberra Secondary School. Virtually everything the students do is web-based, including ordering lunch. The students can order their meal online at the chowwiz.com website or at in-school kiosks, and then pick it up and pay for it just by placing their electronic ID on the smart card reader. It is a web-based system. Therefore, as long as student has got internet access from home, at home, they will be able to use the card. They are also given the PIN number. So what they have to do is key in the PIN number and they can even pre-order food up to three months in advance. So in a way, the parents will be able to monitor their eating habits and also their consumption uh, habits. In fact, parents can easily check on what their children are eating since the school prints out a dietary analysis so parents know if their kids are eating too many fats or getting too much cholesterol. In this cashless lunchroom, there is no bullying, no hitting up little kids for their money since they don't have any and don't need any. No teacher takes attendance here at the Canberra School. The students log in each morning by waving their smart card over an RFID reader to confirm that they're present, saving teachers a lot of busy work. First of all, we cut down on the administrative part. Student, uh, teachers need not mark attendance manually. That will cut down time spent on marking attendance. And uh, the system will be able to tell us who are the latecomers. And we can even use, use, uh, link it up with SMS uh, to inform parents that the students, their children are not in school or were late for school. The Canberra School newspaper isn't a paper at all. It's an e-paper, produced and distributed exclusively online. <laughs> the school's library is slowly getting rid of all its books, replacing them with a digital web-based library. The students here run their own radio station. My name is Gamisa, I'm from sec 2 e My hobby is... With the programs produced on IMAX. In Singapore, even exam results are sent to students as SMS messages on their cell phones. That service is particularly popular in Singapore's colleges and universities. Typically, you know, a student needs to travel back to, uh, it takes time, okay? You need to take a bus, a public transport, or what have you, and then you have to walk beyond distance to go to the transport and look at the results, you know? And uh, so what we're offering now is a very interesting application. It's simple, straightforward, you know, where students can get instantaneous access, you know, to the exam results via the SMS. And uh, it works. In Singapore, the e-lifestyle also means e-learning. This is a Singapore-based e-learning company called Ednovation. They passed the CD-ROM era a long time ago and now provide all their e-learning programs on the web to get the best of both worlds, rich media and interactivity. Uh, the rich media is very good for the uh, students of the, this so-called video uh, generation because it's much more attractive and interesting. The interactivity is essential because information gets updated uh, very frequently and uh, through the combination of both, uh, you get the best of the both more. Ednovation's approach to e-learning is easy in a country where 90% of the population has access to broadband services. Broadband is the enabler. Without the pipe into the schools and the homes, even if we have the content and the applications, we cannot deliver it. So that is uh, the, really the essential um, infrastructure that must be in place. But it's more than just Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and particularly uh, Korea. 
uh, the broadband infrastructure has uh, really um, advanced uh, very significantly over the last few years. This e-learning technology provides benefits not only to the students, but also to their parents and teachers. From the teacher angle, you have access to these broadband materials. If I'm teaching a lesson on volcanic eruption, Singapore has no volcanoes. So you can now show a video of the volcanic eruption. That uh, picture uh, tells a thousand words, a video even more. And that's the advantage. For the student, they find learning much more interesting instead of just reading uh, textual information. For the parents, because this uh, is piped directly into the home now, the parents will also will know what the child are learning in schools and uh, also would, uh, will find uh, learning interesting. Quality education is a must in Singapore if the country is to provide the talent needed for the evolving high-tech industry. Singapore, we believe in Asia, has a special position because it's a country that has no natural resource, only human resources. As a result, the government pushes very hard uh, with the private sector to implement, um, uh, to advance the education system. And uh, e-learning, in fact, IT and education has started uh, way earlier than many other Asian countries, as early as uh, in the uh, late 80s. Uh, so we have come a long way in terms of uh, developing these technologies. We believe uh, we are the leader in this area and we can export uh, such technology to other Asian countries. Even Singapore's public library is high tech. No waiting in line to check out a book. Every book has a radio frequency identification or RFID card buried in the back of the book. So to check out a book, just go to an automated kiosk. Put your e-library card in the slot, place the book on the RFID reader, and your book is officially checked out. It's the same when you return a book. No need to find a librarian. Just drop the book in the chute and get confirmation that your book has been returned. This is Singapore, so of course you can even use your cell phone to check out books. If you've put in a reserve request for a particular book, the library notifies you that it's in by sending you an SMS on your cell phone. The library is also digitizing its collection so that patrons can now go to kiosks and call up an article or story or ebook and order it for download directly to their computer. With public libraries going out of fashion in some parts of the world, especially among young people, Singapore has built this library right in the middle of a shopping mall. If the kids won't come to the library, the library comes to them. But high-tech libraries and schools are just the beginning in Singapore. In a small country with limited space and lots of cars, the government uses a sophisticated electronic road pricing system called ERP to regulate traffic. Every car must have an IU, an in-vehicle unit, which reads a smart card that is loaded with a cash balance. The ERP system automatically identifies each car as it passes through an ERP road gantry using an array of wireless sensors. Want to travel this main road between 9 and 9.30 in the morning? The price is $2 for passenger cars. Willing to drive to work after 9.30? The price goes down to $1. Prices for each toll point range from about six Singapore dollars down to 50 cents, depending on the time of day. The ERP system receives a signal from the in-vehicle unit in your car, it validates the balance in the driver's ERP account, automatically deducts the appropriate amount, and the driver continues on without ever slowing down. If the ERP system senses that the driver does not have enough money in his e-account to pay the toll, it automatically triggers these video cameras to take a picture of his license plate. You'll find a bill with penalties in the mail. With cars sometimes moving through these electronic gantries at more than 50 miles an hour, the entire network process has to be completed in less than one second. The electronic traffic management system in Singapore also includes traffic advisory signs indicating how long it will take to reach various destinations. But Singapore is going even further in getting more efficient use out of its automobiles. This is the world's only automated urban rental car business run by Honda. It's called ICVS, the Intelligent Community Vehicle System. Uh, Honda realized that uh, uh, cars are not being uh, fully utilized. Um, it's been uh, uh, sitting in the car park uh, either for the whole day 
So there must be a way to uh, better utilize the cars and also the parking space. So uh, they all started out with uh, better utilizing the resources that we have. No need for advanced reservations, no need for anything other than your Honda smart card and a personal ID number. Go to any in-town Honda ICVS location, just wave your RFID card in front of the windshield, the system validates your card and automatically unlocks the door. You then enter a PIN number, the system verifies your identity and unlocks the ignition. No actual car key is needed. You just drive away. And it's cashless, uh, keyless, and paperless. You can drop off the car at any inner city Honda ICVS location. It takes less than a minute for the whole rental process to be completed. With the Honda ICVS system, business people can have access to a car for important meetings, but still leave their own cars at home and use public transit for commuting. A lot of uh, our cities in the world now are facing a congestion problem. Uh, cars are, uh, there, there are more and more cars getting into the city. And so the idea is to uh, get people to commute by uh, public transportation, get into the city, and during the day when they need the car for business purposes, uh, they can uh, pick up a car and drop the car whenever they like. So the idea is uh, to eliminate the needs for owning the car, but still have the uh, uh, enjoyment of using the car. Singapore is, of course, known as a strictly disciplined society, with lots of rules and lots of fines. But even if you happen to get into trouble here and land in jail, not to worry, you too can be the beneficiary of high tech with this new televisit system. Started just a few months ago, relatives of inmates no longer have to trek all the way to the actual prison to visit their loved ones. <laughs> The government has now set up several of these prison link centers, providing teleconference facilities over an ISDN network. Relatives can go to a neighborhood televisit center and have a private visit. The, the place, the location of the televisit uh, center is much more convenient um, as compared to um, when I have to visit my brother in Changi. So definitely the place is, is convenient. Uh, it's kind of strange at first la, to see him on, on, on the screen rather than the real person, but um, it's pretty clear. I can hear him very clearly, so that's, that's very good, yeah. The government is expanding this system to a web-based network that will soon allow family members to do virtual prison visits from the privacy of their own home. And indeed, privacy is one of the features that the users of the current system really like. When we go for the regular visit, um, there's lots of visits taking on, you know, taking place at the same time, and it's in close proximity to each other. So sometimes what we say, you know, the other people can hear, and we can also hear what other people say. Whereas here, it's like in a room, and the room is soundproof, I think. So um, it is pretty good. It's more more privacy this way. The televisit system here in Singapore even enables family members to order books and supplies for prisoners online, and the government handles delivery to the appropriate jail cell. When you walk down the streets of Singapore, you'll see lots of people using cell phones, but nobody's talking to anybody. They're looking at the screen or they're punching the buttons here, sending short messages to each other. In fact, Singapore is the world leader in the use of SMS, the short message service on many mobile phones. In a country where nearly everyone has a sophisticated mobile phone, the cellular phone network has become the backbone of a new model for mobile commerce. Here at the Engwa Movie Multiplex, no need to stand in line for tickets or log on to a movie ticket's website. Just send an SMS to the movie theater and order your tickets over your cell phone. When you get there, just give them your confirmation number and the clerk hands you your tickets. A wireless service like this is easy to establish in a country where SMS is already standard on all cell phones. SMS itself is actually a very popular service. It's something that the consumer markets in Singapore are very familiar with, uh, even for the regions. And uh, I think uh, for SMS services, uh, it's, uh, it gives us the immediate reach you know, uh, of this critical mass. So I would say from that perspective, uh, we don't see a lot of problems or issues that we have to tackle when we launch it. Okay. 
Uh, as far as the technical uh, consideration is concerned, because we are adopting largely uh, a well-practiced uh, you know, technology that is, in a, in a large sense, independently quite matured. Even movie ads in the newspaper now carry special ID numbers for particular films and showings. Just enter the number into your cell phone, and you don't even have to punch in the name of the movie or the theater. The mobile movie ticket service here in Singapore is called Why Wait? And it should be popular in a country where getting tickets to the movies the old-fashioned way is sometimes a hassle. Uh, very often they have to go hours in advance to get the tickets so that they don't miss it out. If they go too late, of course, the ticket could have been sold out. So uh, now, why wait as the name uh, you know, uh, implies? It means why wait? You can do your transactions anywhere, anytime. So uh, you got the tickets over the SMS by simply sending back an EW. Okay, to a predefined port of double six double eight one. It's as simple as that. And then thereafter, you'll be led, you know, step by step with uh, interactive SMSs before you finally conclude the purchase. The use of mobile commerce for selling movie tickets has another interesting economic angle. Movie theaters can now offer last-minute discounts in the same way airlines dump empty seats with last-minute web-only fares. You may have a situation where you are approaching the screening times and they are continuing to have seats available and you the, I mean every dollar you every seat that you sold is a dollar gain so they could do uh, active promotions giving a discount like a 50% off for the last half an hour before the screening times and they could get a very interesting response and that is going to be extra revenue incremental revenue you know to these merchants one of the reasons the underlying SMS technology is mature here in Singapore is that the government made sure that all the country's cell phone providers got together and agreed to a common platform. Uh, it's very unusual for the three telco, you know, or competitive uh, nature of business, to agree, you know, to temporarily drop their competitive suits and to focus on the bigger picture and get together, you know, to, to launch something that is actually of a national level. The government not only got the mobile service providers to work together, it even brought together Nokia, Ericsson, Siemens and Motorola to make sure the cell phone manufacturers were cooperating. Another approach to wireless mobile commerce is the use of RFID-enabled cell phones at places like coffee shops. Here at the Coffee Bean in the Suntech area of Singapore, the customer doesn't need cash or a credit card. Just place your mobile phone on the register pad, and your account is charged for the amount of your purchase. The RFID chip is embedded in the back of the phone. One of the leaders in promoting this form of mobile commerce is cell phone maker Nokia. We at Nokia see the mobile phone becoming a personal trusted device, um, with, and definitely being a device that you would never leave your home without. So um, you can actually leave your wallet and your cash at home, you have a payment device in your hands. It's a um, very fast way of paying for small purchases, um, convenient, um, and it's, it's a fun way of um, enabling your phone to do more than it's doing today. The economic theory here is that there is a niche for a new kind of payment system, one that falls between cash and credit cards. For small value payments, it may not be viable for some merchants to use credit card. And for example, uh, although I, I, I know that coffee joints do accept credit card, but it is not frequently used. So we are offering another choice for the consumers. Uh, and there are also a segment of market who are not eligible for credit card. Yeah, so uh, we see this as a good instrument for students especially. Another mobile payment system called Telepay is available at many retail outlets in Singapore, like this electronics store. Uh, today, um, you can actually do with a cashless transaction with a credit card, and so you don't, can leave your cash at home. Here, what we're advocating is that you can actually do a cashless and cardless transaction, but still ultimately using Visa. So you can actually execute a credit card transaction without having to bring a physical card. And by actually tracking through the whole transaction, we can link in loyalty, we can link in discounts, uh, the whole... Um, jumble of actually sales transactions and features can come in. With the Telepay system, the customer just takes his purchase to the checkout counter, then points his cell phone at a wireless point-of-sale terminal and beams his credit card information using the infrared port. To verify the security of the transaction, the system calls the buyer back on his cell phone and requests a PIN number. This phone call is to confirm your transaction with... Once he enters the correct PIN, 
the transaction is confirmed. Since all the customer's credit card information, including his credit card number, is stored internally within the computer system, he doesn't have to show his credit card or give his credit card number to the clerk. It's all invisible and secure. By using mobile payments, uh, what you've seen just now with Telepay is that it's pin protected. Um, when you have a pin security, it's very well established in most ATM type interactions. It's very secure. It's something that only you as a consumer know. Nobody can duplicate it. And with the second factor of the mobile phone, that transaction that you saw just now couldn't be conducted with somebody else's phone. It has to be done with your personal phone. So when you combine your personal phone with your own pin, it's a two-factor security thing, very, very secure. You can even buy a Coke in Singapore using a mobile charge system and your cell phone. Just call the Coke machine, send it an SMS telling it you want to buy a drink. Select your drink, and the Coke is yours. No cash needed. The cost is automatically added to your cell phone bill. As we've seen, Singapore is fast becoming a totally wireless society where almost anything can be done with a cell phone or a PDA. So it's no surprise that several companies here are involved in the design and development of new mobile products. This is Group Sense Technologies, a company which specializes in PDAs and cell phones. Their newest product is called the Green Phone. Green because the actual phone handset on the left emits no radiation. That's because the handset is just a controller. The guts of the phone, the receiver and transmitter, are in the separate unit on the right called an e-box. You can carry the e-box in your pocket. It communicates with the handset via Bluetooth. And because they no longer have to squeeze the battery into the handset, this green phone offers up to 10 hours talk time and weeks of standby time before needing a charge. And if you've wondered what you'll be able to do when third-generation cell phones finally come to the States, here's a preview. This combination, PDA and cell phone, lets you send or receive faxes directly from your handheld unit. It comes with a soft keyboard, but it also does handwriting recognition in English and Chinese, so you can even send SMS messages in your own handwriting which means you can now send someone your signature to confirm a business transaction. Since all 3G phones are based on SIM chips, these phones include what's called an STK, or SIM toolkit, that lets you write your own applications. Here are two examples, programs for finding the nearest hospital or getting a taxi. And if you want maximum flexibility to get the best signal or services on your cell phone, this phone lets you select among different cell phone providers. This new phone also comes with a music composer, so you can create your own unique cell phone ring. And if you do business in China, this would be handy. A PDA with a built-in English-Chinese dictionary, including standard business document templates in both languages. These smartphones will be released first in Asia, then Europe, and then eventually in the United States. If you already own a PDA, in particular a handspring visor with an expansion slot, this is the gadget for you. It is an expansion module which turns your PDA into a massager. It was developed on a whim by a small startup here in Singapore called Raynet Technologies. We are no massager. We are no massager designer. In fact, none of us in the company has designed, has experienced a massaging uh, with a massager. So the big challenge was first to understand what a massager and how it works. The second is to understand how to convert uh, electronics to, to do this massaging. So the biggest problem that we have was to try to design electronic circuitry to produce a waveform for each of the uh, massaging modes. That means squeezing, chopping and tapping. You can't believe it. The first time when we did it, it was scary, you know, because it was like electrocuting a man. You know? But they did perfect it, finding just the right combination of waveforms, and it works. You can pick special massage programs for different parts of your body, 
and you can choose different massage motions, from squeezing or tapping to chopping. And the visor display shows you an animation of the action. With an offbeat product like this, the folks at Raynet were a little nervous when they called up Handspring in California and asked for a meeting. Okay, the first time when I brought this product over to Handspring, uh, the, the manager who was responsible for us thought we are going there with a messaging, you know, some kind, something to do with uh, SMS. And they were surprised and stunned that, you know, we really did develop a massager a massager that can massage human body. But after they demonstrated the Raycom massage module to the handspring development team, the reception got noticeably warmer. The gentleman who, who picked it up decided to try it, and he was kind of skeptical, and he was, uh, in fact, he was a bit worried whether this really works, you know. And having tried it and feel it, and he said, hey, TC, this is not what I, I, I expected. This is great, you know. And finally, he said, hey, hang on, I got to talk to somebody. And there comes 12 people, you know, who wanted, everybody wanted to have a feel of it. With all this massaging going on, the obvious question is, how much will this drain your visor's battery? Numerous Raycom says the unit uses less power than the typical visor add-on. You'll be surprised, you know. Everybody asked me that question. Uh, in fact, I would invite you to go to our website, read what Dr. John Chiam has said. He says, I couldn't believe it. But to put it in proper perspective, the specification of a visor is 100 milliamps. This product uses less than 35 milliamps. You can even go to the Raynet website to download special massage routines for your portable massage unit. In order to continue to interest the user, you have to allow the user to continue to have new massages. So uh, the electronic, sec electronic secretaries allow us to be able to introduce new massages. So the first one that we're going to be downloaded onto the website would be body toning. That's part one of our special series on high tech in Singapore. Next week, we'll look at biotech in Singapore. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Stuart Shafe. Computer Chronicles is brought to you by the Oracle Small Business Suite one completely integrated application that helps make it easier to run your business, including accounting, sales and service, your web presence, and more. Additional funding is provided by pc to pc the online migration service from PC First, moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one.